Now, uh, Stephen, then tell us if if this, if, if, if you got um, into power and this People's Bank was to be established here in South Africa. Take us through a quick summary now. What would what would happen? You'd create a bank, and what would it do? How would it start solving much of these problems? What what what? How would it work? Well, the first the first thing you'd have to do is to retire the national debt, because that's currently taking to about twenty percent of the annual budget uh, in the payment of interest. So we just have to swap Sorry, the. Just go back there uh, a second. <laughs> Twenty percent of our national budget goes into paying our foreign debt. No, 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 it goes into paying interest. Interest. Oh, excuse yes, me. Yes. Sorry, the yes. interest on yes. the debt. Yes. So that's even worse. The, the, <laughs> that's actually, it's ridiculous. It's just yes. And and, and yeah. the present, thirty-six uh, percent of our uh, government debt is held by foreigners, which is a very dangerous situation because um, they can dump that uh, debt any time you know they feel so inclined. And cause huge disruptions in our uh, foreign exchange and our, our, our uh, balance of trade. So uh, the first thing would be to uh, to repay that national debt with uh, the People's Bank. But how would it do that? Just tell us. Do you, would it? Where would it get? Where would this People's Bank get the money from? It would create the money out of nothing. Same, like the, the same way the banks are, are doing right now. Yes, and right. it would replace it. We'd, you'd have to do it over a sort of. Two to three year period, not and uh, you do it on a structured basis, five percent every two months, and then you you work it down and, until you've got it down to zero, uh, so as not to cause uh, too much disruption. And this 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 so called national debt will now be bearing zero interest. And what it means is that the the money supply, the money will it, it will all balance out. So there's no net um, uh, increase. Um, or decrease. Now, once once you accomplish that, then the uh, one of the first things you need to do is to set up a state mortgage bank or people's mortgage bank, so that uh, people can then uh, cash in their uh, pay pay off their bonds and get zero interest bonds from the from the people's bank. So that will also have to be phased in, and that will mean that people who are currently spending about half their after-tax income on um, you know, capital repayments and interest will have that additional income uh, in which to liquidate their other debts and to uh, in increase their, their consumption of, of, of necessary and, and, and uh, excess goods, which will then uh, you know, revitalize the economy. Wow. Uh, okay, so this is Stephen. Um, yeah. yeah. Carry on, Michael. Stephen. Can I just uh, 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 mm. throw a, a question in here? Um, obviously, the, the the one of the problems we have here, uh, anyone who's a homeowner or a car owner that pays mm. um, the the monthly ridiculous amounts of interest on it, uh, you know that you can take twenty years to thirty years to pay off your mortgage on your home or sometimes yes. even your car forever, and some some people just never ever pay it off. But in essence, after the first seven or eight years or ten years, you should have actually paid it all off. So um, could we not follow, um, and this is really what my contention is, in the footsteps, footsteps of Iceland where we actually any home loan or car loan that's older than X amount of years is automatically settled and closed because theoretically those people have paid off all the money that they, borrowed, that they were so-called loaned. And... Um, and, and restructure the, the rest of the mortgages and all these loans to make it far more easy, uh, easy and accessible to the people to, for the people to deal with and not, not feel so strangled by it. Yes, we, we, could, we could do that. Um, the first thing is, is to replace the, the loans that have been taken from the banks, uh, transfer them to the, mortgage, to the, the People's Mortgage Bank, just to get the interest uh, factor uh, taken care of. Uh, and then one can look at um, allowing pe people to uh, receive a um, – what one could do, uh, like they did in Germany in the 30s, you, uh, for every child in your family, you could uh, reduce the loan, which is what they did, by a quarter. So that if, if you've got uh, four children in your family, and this has been done before, then the, the loan is extinguished. 
Um, Fantastic. I mean, that's. Yeah. I mean, this is this is really, but this is just probably one of many different uh, advantages of having a people's bank, yes. uh, because it can it can it can deal with a lot of these problems um, instead of right now, which is it goes into a legal system, and uh, we've seen firsthand what our legal system does. I mean, it's it's really just an extension of the banking system right now. Yes, and we're not yes. just saying this because we're we're crazy. We've seen it ourselves physically and, mm. and, and experienced mm. it. Um, but instead, there's an alternative, and this gives the power back to the people, or certainly a larger degree of power back to the people. But now, who runs this bank, Stephen? Does, is it the government that runs this bank? Could it be turned into a, a, a you know, last year, the Auditor General said that the um, South African government squandered 32 billion rand in one year of unnecessary expenses. Now, if you gave them the power to be able to print their own money, isn't that just inviting chaos? How do you, how would you deal with that? I mean, who actually has the power to to create this money out of nothing and 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 serve the people, and how is it limited? Well, it's the the, the ultimate power will will, will um, result in parliament, and and uh, the proposal would include the the establishment of a monetary trusteeship, and this would consist of about eleven people who are uh, skilled in in economics and finance. Uh, do not have any connections with any uh, private corporations, and they would deliberate once a month on the increase in the uh, money supply to cater for uh, growth in population, in, in productivity, and in ex and the expansion of the economy, uh, or decrease it if, if, if it is a requirement. Normally, if you decrease, you would use uh, temporary taxation. That's, that's a far more efficient way of doing it. So the monetary trusteeship would... Um, uh, determine the increases, and then the treasury would ad administer it. And the um, we would actually no longer really need to have. A, see that the People's Bank would then uh, have slightly different functions, and that would be actually continuing some of the existing functions of the Reserve Bank, and that is to have uh, banking supervision, uh, to regulate the banks, to issue them with licenses, and to see that they are abide by all the, the different rules. Okay, so you could then create a, a regional banks as a subset of the of the People's Bank, um, which is what the Reserve Bank is kind of supposedly doing now. But of course, it, 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 those licenses are reserved for only you know massive commercial structures. Uh, yes. How would that change? I mean, I'm, again, I'm looking for to the man on the street here. Would I be able to go to my local corner guy and be able to instead of getting absolutely slaughtered on interest and payday loans and this this micro lending, which is just just awful beyond belief um, yes. that there's going to be an alternative for them to go. Well, your, your biggest investment in your life is, is, is your house, and, and that will be done on an interest-free basis. And we can even extend that to, to motor cars. The, um, the private banks will be on a full reserve basis. In other words, they will take in deposits, and, then the, and they will offer a, an interest rate, and then they will lend on those deposits to uh, borrowers with the difference that they will have to share the risk instead of just looking at a borrower who's got certain assets and if he, if he goes uh, if he goes into default they don't care they know they're going to get the assets they actually have to be very careful now about how they lend because they're lending other people's money and in that way uh, we will have less rectus lending and, and, and more res responsible mm. lending now just for those listening to this again as well I mean what Stephen mm. said there they'll have to lend their own money instead mm. of right now which is, uh, is they're, they're, <laughs> they're lending or well, they're lending real money I should say instead of creating mm. this, this this money mm. out of nothing which is, is so important I mean this is what we need to get rid of I mean these banks are just producing mm. cash I mean I think the Americans for for I don't know how long now have been <laughs> engaged in this quantitative easing where they're just pushing money into into the system System. Um, but yeah, Stephen, this is this is fascinating. I mean, we can talk about this into in a lot of detail, which I don't want to go into too much detail now. Just really yes. for the people. Um, just tell me one question: Would this People's Bank still work in the South African rand, or would there be a, a new kind of currency called the Ubuntu dollar or the Ubuntu credit or something uh, that would compete with the rand? No, no. The, the intention would be to replace the rand, so that the, the money in circulation currently is all private debt money bearing interest. We want to change it to interest-free state-owned money. In other words, the money that is in existence at the moment does not belong to you. Even if you've got a savings account, that money belongs to the bank. Um, if you look at it this way, if everyone should uh, repay all their loans, 
then the money supply would shrink to nothing. Because whenever you repay a loan, you reduce the money supply. Mm. But there would still be an interest portion still left to pay on that. That's the scary bit. Uh, no, the only people who would be paying interest would be those people who uh, borrow to set up an, uh, a company or, an, an, uh, or a business. Because then they would be borrowing money which has been, uh, produ which has been created by the state. Therefore, uh, you're entitled to ask some return because that is not that is not uh, private bank money. Okay, I see. So I we'd see. have we'd have it, we have a, the system would be that the, the money in circulation would be it would have been created by the by the by the, the people's bank. In other words, it's people's money. Right. Okay. The, so it's it's right, and it's 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 backed by the people. It's interest free, which is still I think the number one and most important right. aspect. It's, in, it's in other words, of what we're planning to do, we're going to nationalise the money supply, but we're not going to nationalise the the banks. The commercial commercial banks can continue to uh, act act as lenders for for investment purposes. In other words, they become investment banks. Um, and we also must remember that half, currently half the income of commercial bank, private banks, come from outside activities, from from leasing, from from uh, foreign exchange transactions, from commissions. So this is not going to affect them in the, to the extent that they're suddenly going to go out of business. In fact, they will probably make bigger profits because of the because of the economy booming. So they have nothing to fear. Okay. That, well, that's a good point. I appreciate that. I'm guessing um, interest. Uh, sorry, inflation. Would be pretty much wiped out because now you don't have interest on these loans, on this debt. Yes, well, the, the cause of inflation, and it, it's so simple, but they make it very complicated when you uh, read it in these uh, economic textbooks, is the interest which is created on loans created out of nothing. So that interest, in order to, to they only create sufficient money to for, for the loan. And then the interest has to be added at the end of the year, so they have to create another loan, and that is a non-productive loan because that it's only for the purposes of, of paying the interest. So, without having to pay the interest on um, on state-created money, there will then be zero inflation. And that is the I mean, that if you look back, for example, to give you uh, an example which lasted from 1861 to 1914, the uh, the State Bank of the Russian Empire. They had zero inflation throughout that period because the state was creating all the money. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, again, I'm, I'm happy to hear that this has now been, you know, this is, again, this is one of the primary reasons why I wanted to do this interview to, you know, to show people listening to this that there's a structure behind uh, uh, the Ubuntu, um, you know, utopian philosophy. And, and Michael, I agree. I think I'm going to stop using the word utopian now. Um, you've convinced me. And,